when I was a little kid, I was uh, there. There was a, a Haggadah that was put out for a tzedakah organization. It was called the Diskin Orphanage, and it was basically a, they made copies of old Haggadahs, like like with illustrations in it. So they every year they publish another Haggadah. And they, you know, with a paperback cover, it's famous, like you buy a whole series of them. And it was, it was mailed out to thousands of people uh, as part of their uh, fundraising efforts for the Diskin orphan, Orphanage. So my uncle, Ola Shalom, had a uh, very chashua, old Haggadah. They asked him permission to uh, copy it, to typeset it, to, you know, to, to copy it and, and use it. And they said, what would you like to name it? You, you get the naming rights. So he says, well, you know, my namesake was Moshe Bamberger. That was my grandfather. That was his father. So he says, I'm gonna, let's call it the Moshe Bamberger Haggadah. Okay, nice name. So it comes in the mail, and my father shows me. It's really cool. I don't know if you, you know, when, and now I'm used to having my name on covers of books, but, I'm just, but uh, back in the time, to see your name, you know, the Moshe Bamberger Haggadah, it's spitz. Like, you know, it's like bragging rights. It wasn't me, it, was, it wasn't even my grandfather, but it was named after him, but it, it looked really cool. So I brought a copy into Yeshiva for show and tell. I wanted to show my Rebbe that my name, you know, his Talmud's name is, is on the cover. So, but I didn't show it right away. And there was another boy in the class who comes in and, uh, and he comes up to the Rebbe and he shows the Rebbe the Moshe Bamberger Haggadah. And I was like, I didn't give you permission to take that out of my bag. That's my Moshe Bamberger Haggadah. That's not your Moshe Bamberger Haggadah. That's, you know, what right did you have to go into my bag and take it out? He says, no, I didn't. Oh, come on, baloney. Like, give it back. He says, all right, fine. He gave it back to me. A chutzpah, and I was like really steaming from this. Like, how did this guy go? He stole my thunder. I wanted to show it to my rabbi. He took my thing and showed it to my... Anyway, I come home, and I take it out of the bag, look through my knapsack, and like, there are two Moshe Bamar this now in my bag. This kid, his father got one in the mail also. He gave it to his son to bring to Yeshiva to show Rebbe, or to show me, or whatever. And I immediately, I, like, as a kid, like, what's the chances of, like, this guy also having a Moshe Bamar Haggadah, you know, that, and showing it to Rebbe? I, you need a crema cup. You need to, like, have a little bit of a twisted mind to, like, think that maybe that would be the case. But I was so quick to assume in, my, in the courtrooms in my mind that he's wrong. Obviously, I'm right. I, I can't be wrong. But you always have to be down the cops close. You everything that you do, whatever you see in anybody, you see a person on the street, you see a person in your house, you see a person, judge favorably. Because first of all, you probably don't know what he's doing right now. And even if you see exactly what he's doing right now, and you know that he doesn't have an ulcer, and why is he in McDonald's? You don't know. You still don't know. You have no idea what people, how many layers, much more layers than an onion has, does the human brain have.